Hello friends, this is Oswaldo from Rock and Dream and today we're going to be focusing on attention to detail when you're climbing and this is going to be a perfect problem to work with you guys. There's so much involved, specifically this one move here and this is the thing, when I was climbing outdoors, I was working on this problem here which is called igneous ambience and it involves a lot of contact strength and I actually use this yes, green problem yeah. for Thank training you. and there is just some details that I want to share with you because there's so much more than just contact strength in this single move. So we're going to break this down and share with you what works, what doesn't and why. All right, let's get started. Now let's look at the climb from far away so you can get a clear idea of the couple of moves that I have to do and it's pretty straightforward you guys pretty straightforward you start off with a compression here and you want to go for this hold here so that's where the contact strength comes in because I can't do this statically I have to do a dynamic move to it and then from here I have to do another dynamic move to this hold here it is a blind hold um, as well so I'm gonna go over what it takes just to do these two moves there's so much involved these are the two starting holds this is the left hold here not too bad of a crimp um, it's not too small not too big just good enough same thing with the right hand start hold and the thing is I have to throw to a crimp hold which is this one here it is pretty small but it's good enough that I can hold on to if I hit it just right Now the first thing that I want to share with you guys that makes it really crucial for this climb it is body positioning. Now if I start this climb straight on like so it is extremely difficult for me to keep this compression in and try to explode to this hold. It is really difficult. I know it might seem like I'm not trying here but I actually am and yeah it is, it is hard. So if we look on the left side, notice I'm on the wall straight on. And as I mentioned, it is extremely hard to pull myself up. I'm carrying all of my weight up. I'm trying to like pull in and reach out, but it's, it's, it's really difficult. So what I end up doing is I twist in, my hips in, I keep them in, I keep my body weight above this foothold as much as I can. And I use my left foot to stabilize myself. I put a lot of pressure on that left foot. So this helps me keep my hips onto the wall. And at the same time, what I'm doing, I'm compressing with my left hand and right hand here. This is a lot more comfortable. It's still hard, but it's more comfortable than this situation here. So from here on, what I have to do is go to this hold here. Now there is no way I can do this statically, so I have to do a dynamic move. And this is where the attention to detail really matters. And what I'm doing is I'm not just throwing for that hold and just thinking about catching that hold. I'm thinking about my left hand, my core, my left foot, my right foot, my hips. I'm thinking about all of this put together when I throw for this hold. And I'm also thinking about the timing. When am I gonna throw? And then I think about the catch. Once I catch it, what do I do? And we're gonna go over that. Now, as we mentioned, we already figured out the body positioning, which is hips in, twist in towards the wall, put my weight above this foothold here. And at this point, what I'm doing, starting with my feet is this. On my right foot, I'm putting pressure. And on my left foot, notice I have this slot hold here. Now, one of the things that I was trying to do at first was pressing down on this hold because I figured if I press down, I can reach to this hold and then just hold on to it. But that's not the case. If I press down, when I reach to this hold, my left foot slips out and I can't keep tension. So one of the things that I started doing when I place my left foot, what I'm trying to do is I'm pressing away. So I'm putting as much pressure in this direction here. And what happens is I end up locking myself with my left foot pressing away and my right foot pressing down. So I'm kind of doing this right now. 
I'm doing this with my feet and I'm doing this with my hands. I'm compressing with my hands and I'm pressing away with my feet. And this is a really good position because I'm blocked into place. So now what I have to do to get to this hold is use momentum. I have to use some sort of momentum to get to that hold because again, we can't do this statically. have to do this quickly so the next detail that I think about is timing timing is crucial at this point so what I do is this before I throw to that hold I pull away a little bit and then I explode quickly to that hold as soon as I hit it my goal is to pull in towards the wall as soon as I can because I don't want to be carrying my weight too long so I pull in I keep my hips in and at all times this is once again the details at all times I'm adding pressure on my left foot and right foot this is what I'm doing at all times and again as I mentioned I focus on all my points so I have one two three four points with my left hand I never stop engaging it I never stop pulling with my left hand so there's so much going on you guys in this move and I just had to share this with you guys because I'm learning at the same time that it's not just about contact strength. At first, what I figured is I can't get to this hold because my contact strength is weak. But no, that is not the case. My contact strength, I can build it up, but it takes a lot of technique, a lot of work figuring out my right foot positioning, my hip positioning, my left foot positioning, and my left hand positioning and the timing of my throw. So there is so much involved just in this one move. And this climb actually helped me out so much when I brought it into the outdoors, which is one of my climbs, Igneous Ambience, and I got to send it, but I gotta say, this training helped me out yes, a lot. Friends, before we continue, please do consider to support my work over on Patreon. It helps me create more content like this, and I also make exclusive content on my Patreon account. I just finished a six-week program with Paul Robinson, and it was really, really hard, really hard. I share how it went, how much I progressed, which was a lot, and I share some tips and exercise that we all must do as climbers. So if you're interested in supporting my work and watching that video, make sure you click on the link in the description below. All right, let's continue. Now, awesome. Now we know how we got to this hold and we're pulled in and we're ready for the next hold. This is the thing. It is really difficult with this climb because it's a crux that is a continuous crux, I would say, because after the first move, you have to do another dynamic move to the next hold because it's really hard to stay in this position for too long. But the thing is this, I can't throw to the next hold with the body positioning that I'm currently in. So I have to adjust. So at this point, I adjust my body positioning to get to a better position so I can throw and reach for the next hold. As always, love you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time.